Philippa, let's talk first of all about how you got the role of Howard's End. In Howard's End, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so I got sent the um, the audition while I was in LA, um, and it was um, I was like immediately struck by the character description of Helen, and you know I recognised the name Howard's End, and I was familiar with the book and. Um, you know, it just seemed like an amazing project. And um, yeah, the, the character of Helen is just like, it was such a lengthy description. And um, that is very rare that, you know, that description is so intricate and um, yeah, detailed and uh, sort of fully formed. And so I just jumped on tape as soon as I could. Um, and then heard back from them uh, that I needed to fly to London to meet Hetty, the director. Um, so sort of like scrambled over there and uh, met with Hetty and had a very intense uh, audition. Um, it was like about an hour, um, just quite rigorous because they usually, I mean, that might not seem very long, but in audition terms, that's a really long audition. Um, yeah. yeah, and then a few weeks later, I got the part. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. You know, um, this adaptation has a lot of really big names, um, uh, people attached to it. You're a relative newcomer, although um, people, especially in Australia, would be familiar with your work. But what was it like to join a cast with um, a lot of people who have, especially, um, you know, English actors, who have been around for a while? What, what, what was it like to kind of join that cast and what did you learn? Uh, I mean, it was um, amazing uh, because, you know, especially to be the only person there who wasn't uh, British, um, you know, feeling a little bit like a convict that had sort of like snuck my way in. Um, but I mean, my, uh, you know, I had seen and was such a big fan of Matthew McFadden and Hayley Atwell. Um, I'd seen them both in Brideshead, oh no, not Brideshead, um, in Any Human Heart together. And um, yeah, so I think I was a little daunted. Um, and, but what was nice about it was that there were several other um, of the younger cast members who were pretty fresh out of drama school. And so in a way were almost, uh, more green than I was so that was kind of nice um and yeah Haley and Matthew just created a really lovely environment on set um you know they never take themselves too seriously and um the same goes for Tracy Orman and um you know she's just so lovely and um immediately wants to know who you are and wants to start you know mimicking your accent and um so they they really made it um, a lovely and not, you know, not a terrifying experience, which it could have been. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, obviously when, when you hear about Howard's End, you immediately think about the, the film. First of all, it's a very famous novel by Ian Forster, but um, the film was very successful back in the day. It won, I think, three Oscars, especially for um, Emma Thompson and Helena Bonham Carter was in it playing your role, um, did you did you decide to go back and watch the film or did you want to keep it completely out of your head when you were trying to, um, you know, fig figure out how you were going to play this person? Uh, yeah, I hadn't seen the film um, and decided not to see it until we'd finished filming. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's a good idea just because, you know, they are just the greats and it's so it would be so easy to... Um, yeah, to compare yourself or to sort of um, try and emulate what they did and um, so to attack it with fresh eyes and um, definitely I, yeah, it's a bit nerve-wracking to take on a role that they've done so brilliantly and that people um, really cherish that adaptation and it's an amazing adaptation that I've since seen and I love it. Um, uh, but what I think is also nice is that, you know, they are so different. Um, you know, we have four hours to tell the story and um, get to explore a lot of things um, uh, that with the luxury of just having more time to do that. And um, 
yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that I sort of just had my own crack at Helen and, um, uh, but yeah, I, I love, I love the film. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I, I think you would probably get asked this a lot because um, everybody involved with this production probably had at least a fleeting thought that this had a lot to live up to. And a lot of people would probably be thinking when watching it, um, how does it compare? And I'm wondering if that was ever discussed um, on set or beforehand when you guys were developing this um, series as to whether you had something to live up to or whether you wanted to kind of make it your own and differentiate it from the film. Yeah, I mean, we definitely all felt we had a lot to live up to, uh, not just because it's such a well-loved story, uh, but I think mainly because of, you know, um, the the script, um, you know, Kenny's adaptation, like it's just so beautifully written and um, it was so exciting to get to, you know, speak his words and, yeah, you know, he, he really felt like the perfect person to um, sort of, I guess, update uh, this this story and, um, and and tell it for you know modern audiences and uh, yeah so I think just like we definitely wanted to make sure we you know I remember Haley Hetty coming up to Haley and saying um, there's a a comma there shall we honour that and uh, you know it was always right down to the T of like sort of uh, really making sure that we were honoring the script. And um, I don't think there was too much thought about, uh, you know, living up to the the film necessarily, because I don't think that would be necessarily helpful, um, but just trying to make sure um, we were embodying uh, Kenny's vision and, and Hetty's vision. Yeah, and, and I mean, you you allude to Ken Flanagan being the, um, the, the person who kind of wrote the script, the screenplay for it. It's, he's such a quintessential American dramatist who's taken on a quintessentially British um, classic. Um, what did you think that he brought to it, um, given that you, you're, you're familiar with the source material, but this is, there's something about this where I just felt like it had his stamp on it. What did you think about how he impacted the way that this came out? When you like look at anything that uh, Kenny has worked on before, I always am struck by how, firstly, how natural it feels. Like it could almost feel like improvisation, but it's it's actually you know it's definitely not. It's very detailed, and his writing is very specific, and that lends itself perfectly, I think, to like all the nuances and the wit and um, how detailed Forster's writing is. Um, and as well for making this feel vibrant and, and modern and, and not necessarily feel the way that perhaps a costume drama could with it being, you know, feeling prim and ceremonious and, you know, instead there are all of these scenes that sort of on a page, you know, they were so, every stage direction was so specific and the lines would overlap and it was um, sort of looks like a musical score on the script and um, it's uh, messy and people are jumping on top of each other and it gives that feeling of a vibrant household where people, you know, it feels like family where people are stepping on top of each other's not lines, I guess, um, you know, stepping on top of each other. And, um, yeah, so I think he, um, yeah, I, I think he was the, the perfect person to sort of capture all of that and that he attacked it from uh, not a reverential sort of standpoint, um, that he was just really looking at um, capturing the humans within the story. Yeah, and I think the way, I mean, you've alluded to this, but... Um any scepticism that you have when you first start watching the series is kind of blown away after the first few minutes because it does have a more natural feel and it feels like given that you have four hours to tell the story there's more like room for to breathe and to kind of um understand 
who these people are as opposed to it just being a very kind of dramatic um, two-hour film. And I'm wondering when you first um, when you first started filming um, Howard's End and you first, you know, put the costumes on and started to become Helen, um, what, what, was, what was the feeling on set like that uh, did you feel that it was um, something special and something different? Um, were, were you under a lot of pressure to try to make this your own? What, what was the sense like on set when, in the first few days? Uh, I mean, it was quite intense the first few days. I mean, uh, we, my first day of filming, um, we filmed one of the last most climactic scenes of the whole story. So it was could not have been shot more out of order. So we're sort of starting from the end, uh, this big pivotal scene and, um, you know, it was very much being thrown in a deep end. And, um, but I, I always felt just um, really confident in Hetty's vision and, you know, even when I I was, you know, definitely stressing and there was a bit of anxiety, but it was, um, I think Hetty just knew all of the characters so well and you could always talk to her about everything and her, her vision was so clear. Um, and uh, it really is, you know, in the, in the script, um, that felt like a great safety net to have. Um, so, yeah, I mean, definitely an intense way to to start. Um, and but, I mean, that's you never get to have you never film any something where it's you know the schedule is exactly how you would want it. It's always out of order. It's it's always a bit of a, a mess. So yeah, yeah. You know what I love most about this? Um, well, the novel, the movie, and now this series is that it is really relevant. Um, especially these days in the context of feminism and the debate over, um, you know, women in the workforce and women in um, general life, especially in the States right now, the Me Too movement. Um, did you have a sense that you guys were telling a story that was actually very relevant to the modern day? Yeah, I, I think I, I, um, I mean, I knew that Helen and Margaret are such remarkable women that, you know, stand up even today um, and that they uh, certainly like I I feel like there were even other parts of the story that um, you know with the idea of uh, certainly feminism um, I'm so rambling sorry my computer is like okay I think it's fine now it was just it looked like it was about to anyway should I start again <laughs> Um, uh, yes, it, it, it did, um, in some ways surprise me at how relevant, uh, it is. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Helen and Margaret are these amazing, remarkable women who are so independent despite, uh, their circumstances as women in Edwardian England, um, and they really are um, just great examples of women that I think stand the test of time. And um, I, I think what else sort of struck me that was so relevant is, you know, the idea of um, connecting with people outside of your sort of um your typical ideological sphere and um outside of your uh, especially with helen i think um you know she meets people that have such opposing ideals to her for instance like the wilcoxes who she writes a letter to meg and says you know they um they ripped apart everything that she sort of held dear and believed about the world and she instead of sort of running away from that she loved it and found that fascinating and um yeah instead of uh sort of shying away from people who uh have different beliefs to her own she really um wants to 
understand and, and connect with people that she wouldn't usually, which I think is especially relevant today when, you know, it's so easy to be on social media in your own sort of echo chamber and, um, you know, hear largely people that agree with you. And um, so I do think that that was something that we realised was quite um amazing about the Schlegels and also very, very relevant. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, a lot of the point of this um, of this film and a series is about the, the phrase only connect, it's so famous. And when you hear it said, it um, kind of gives you goosebumps. And, and, and I love how um, both you and Hayley play the Schlegels really strongly. Um, that's it would have been a total. It just would not have worked if the uh, if the Schlegels were too vulnerable or not strong enough. And um, and I'm wondering, did you find that in the only connect theme, what was your connection like with Haley by the end of a filming? How did it end? Uh, really, I mean, I, I you know, as I said, because we were like thrown in the deep end. This was like one of my first times. My no, it was my first time working in the UK and she really took me under her wing and you know you're thrown into so many of these emotionally charged uh scenes and um by the end you know knowing each other really well and um just feeling you know like uh yeah like sisters and um so that was like uh, really lovely and you know that's one of the best things about acting is you know getting sorry my noisy computer keeps making noise <laughs> um uh but yeah that you you know get to work in such intense environments with people and um you know that's that was so lovely to come out of it and um and i think that that made it really easy a lot of those intense sort of scenes because it is so you know the it's the story is not really a, a romance. It's sort of, you know, these two sisters and how they are um, sort of inseparable, but then these two men, these somewhat ill-suited men, pull them apart from each other and in the stories of how they find each other again. And, um, yeah, it was definitely easy to do it with Hayley and, you know, to have her as a friend and also sort of a mentor on set. Yeah, and so and so finally, given that Howard's End is such a famous novel, famous film, and now the series has come out and people really have loved it and responded to it well. It's on stars and um, we're in Emmy season now and uh, and it's possible that Howard's End could reap some nominations at the Emmys just like the film did, you know, decades ago. What does it feel like when you're doing press about the series and uh, there's some talk about awards and things like that like this is that just completely foreign to you at this stage of your career do you find it really exciting a little um, um, nerve-wracking what's your sense when you're doing press about awards potential for a series like this um it's definitely very foreign for me um and lovely uh so um so amazing that people have you know enjoyed it and you know um that's just like amazing to hear because um you know we all cared about it so much and um really just um you know uh loved the script and wanted to do it justice and um so yeah it's just lovely uh and I guess very you know surprising um and uh yeah I don't really know what to think about it because it's um Definitely a first for me, but um, very pleasant surprise. 